Today we are going to check out some of my favorite VS Code extensions for you to increase your productivity as a software developer. And don't worry, I know I talk a lot about front end here on my channel, but these tools will not be only front end focused. So if you're a student, stay with me until the end of this video because I will give you a bonus tip to improve your knowledge on front-end mobile or back-end development and so many other things. So stay with me and now let's get right into the VS Code extensions. So let's start by talking about the productivity tools that you can use to improve your development process. If you have a piece of code that you find yourself typing over and over again, maybe it's time to start thinking about creating a custom snippet. And I will show you how to do it. Let's say, for example, that I constantly find myself creating React applications, so I constantly type const my component, arrow function, export default, etc. etc. VS Code itself has built in snippets that you can use for a bunch of programming languages like JavaScript, Java, but I think it's always nice to create your own snippets and customize your development process. Here, for example, let's create a snippet that automatically creates a React component with an interface, receives props on it, and exports it. So select configure user snippets under code and then settings or just hit alt shift and type configure user snippets and then select the language for which the snippets should appear or if you want the snippet to appear for all languages just select the new global snippets file option. React arrow function export interface component. That's a big name. That is the snippet name. It's what will appear as soon as you start typing the prefix, which talking about it is the word that will trigger the display of the snippet. You could add as many as you'd like. Substring matching is also analyzed. So if you type RAI, it could match to React arrow interface. Body is one or more lines of content which will then be joined as multiple lines upon insertion so for example here the tm underscore file name underscore base is a variable that essentially is the name of our current file without the extension so if you create a file named car.tsx our snippets will then create a component with the name, you know, with an error function with this name, as well as the export default, you know. So a uh, description is optional and well, the name is self-explanatory, it describes the snippet displayed by IntelliSense. So nice, our snippet is ready. So when we type R-A-F-C-E-I and hit enter, we can hit control D to select all of the names and add it if we want to. So here you have it. Simple as that, so a huge productivity boost for your development process, you know, instead of having to you know cause blah, 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 every time you create a new component, you can just use the snippet. And this can also be adjusted for all their cases as well and other programming languages. Just check out the VS Code documentation and, you know, play around with it. You've probably heard about GitHub Copilot. If not, it is basically an AI programmer tool that suggests you code based on the previous code that you've written or even your comments. So this artificial intelligence draws context from your application. So from code and from comments, like I said, to suggest individual lines and even whole functions and whole methods. It's AI model that, you know, powers this, this tool is called Codex. So it is actually a descendant of GPT-3 and its training data is based off billions of lines of code from publicly available resources like GitHub repositories. So yes, it has been trained by open source projects and in knows so much stuff because literally it has like the whole not the whole but some content of the github applications as its training data you know a significant part of it but an hour i would not recommend you to use this tool if you are just you know getting started with programming why because you need to do it, not some AI model. When you're starting to develop your knowledge on a certain sub subject, it's always nice that you train, you know, even your fingers for typing the, the code, but also your brain. So I would not recommend using this tool a lot if you're starting to learn how to program or to code, 
but if you are a more experienced programmer you know you know that's 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 a helpful tool i use it myself and it is surely a productivity tool that will boost your development process and even teach you a lot i have improved my code you know for by using github copilot and um, i have noticed that in more complex applications so it struggles a lot to understand the context but for more isolate functions and more isolate methods i think it, it's actually a good a, a good tool and according to the github documentation copilot is currently a pay tool but free for students if you're interested in using it just check out the link link here in the description and video not sponsored by the way these are just tools that i believe that will help you a lot in your development process and that i use myself so Maria seal of approval. Another extension I would like to show you is CodeSnap. It's an extension that, that allows you to take beautiful screenshots of your code. So it looks just like this when you send to, to someone. Well, not exactly like this, because you know, this is my VS Code theme. By default, the screenshot will look exactly like your VS Code theme, like the fonts, the background, you know, but you can also customize it. To install it, just install it normally like any other extension. Hit Control Shift P or Command Shift P and search for Code Snap. Select the code that you want to screenshot. You can also adjust the width, and you can either save it and you know send it to someone. But what I think works best for me is enable the shutter action to copy. That way, whenever I hit the button, it automatically copies the image, and I just have to hit Control V or Command V and um, you know send it to the person that I want to show my my code to. Uh, you can also edit other settings and I think it's, like I said, a very useful tool. This extension is interesting if you are constantly working with third-part libraries and you want to better manage the size of your application. So import cost displays the size of the imported package. And in this way, you can see how much memory is being allocated for that purpose. For, for, that purpose. for example, Lodash is a very non-JavaScript library used for functional programming, but it is also a heavy library. So there are some methods that are lighter if you just import the, import the methods itself. So by importing the ones that you will use, you know that will your application will then be lighter, but how much lighter? Import cost gives you the precise amount so that you can better manage it. To install it, simply go to your VS Code extension section, search for import cost and click install. You may or may not need to reload your ID, so, so pay attention to that. And then import cost will already show you the imported size of the package. Very useful, very much needed depending on the application you're building. So this extension provides a set of icons based on the Google Material Design Guidelines, which are designed to visually represent file extensions and the folder names. Depending on your file name, the folder, the little icon that appears next to it on the sidebar will automatically change to be you know, easily recognizable by whoever is looking at the code base. Very simple extension, you can also customize it. There are lots of file and folder icons available for you to use. I really enjoy it. It makes the development process more visual than just looking at random file names and, and folders in the sidebar. Now, as I promised, a bonus for those who have stayed with me until this part of the video. If you are a student, you can also benefit from offers that GitHub has in its student package. So again, not sponsored. I just think it's an amazing platform and I don't see many people talking about it. So I actually want to share this with you guys. And in case you don't know, GitHub Student has an amazing and long pack of benefits for students. Just to mention one, GitHub offers six months access to free courses on front end masters. I did a couple of courses, like I said, all of this that I'm telling you, I have used, I have tried, and I have particularly loved it. I'm currently taking a course on algorithms, but if you watch this video, you know that my current project and my company is a design system. So when I was currently on front end masters, I actually saw a course for creating design system with React, and I was like, okay, I need to take this course. 
and very great course by the way and they also offer certificates so for students it's free it's a very nice platform and this is only one benefit of the whole pack of benefits that github student has i need to confess that i haven't tried not even one percent of all these benefits but there's a long list on the website from courses to platforms to deploy your application to access to very useful platforms so you know how i value education search for this the link is in the description box so if you are a student take advantage of all of these tips that i'm giving you so if you've enjoyed this video why don't you watch this one which i talk a little bit about my day-to-day -day as a software developer thank you so much for watching seeing the next one